Why is it that no matter how hard we try, we always seem to fall back into the same addiction, bad habit, or filthy vice? In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why that happens as well as show you an escape route so that you can be the strongest version of yourself in fitness, business, with women, and in faith. And at the end, I'm gonna give you some homework so that you can break that cycle for good. So stick around. Yo, it's your bro, Uncle E, and in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why you keep repeating the same old bad habits. So tell me if this sounds familiar. You're scrolling through YouTube when you click on a clip of Dr. Huberman or a monk mode promoting video. So you decide that you're gonna go and finally kick those nasty habits. A week goes by and you're feeling fine. Week four, week five, and you're feeling more alive. By the time 90 days has arrived, you start thinking, man, I've got this kicked for life. And then a strong temptation arises. Things begin to shift. Maybe it's because your girlfriend left. Maybe it's because your boss fired you. Maybe because your dog died or simply because you want to celebrate. You're going on vacation, the holidays are coming and you got some reason to do something stupid that you know, ultimately you're going to regret, bro. Then you start planning it all out. You're thinking about what you're gonna do, how you're gonna do it, what parking lot you're gonna go to, what website you're gonna go to, what store you're gonna go buy it. You're all giddy and excited on the inside knowing that nothing's gonna stop you. And then you do it and you feel horrible. It really wasn't worth it. Every time you make a promise to yourself and you fail to keep that promise, you lose trust in yourself. And as a result, you begin to lack confidence. The word confidence literally means with trust. Con, with, and fidence, which comes from the word fidelity, trust. And if you don't trust yourself and you don't have confidence in yourself, you're gonna have a low self-esteem and that's no way to win in life. But somehow, you pick it back up and you rise again. Now this cycle can go on for years and decades. I mean, there are men that I meet in their 50s and 60s who've been doing this for 50 and 60 years. And at some point, you gotta recognize that cycle and you gotta step out. Now before I introduce you to the cycle of vice and its four phases and four transitions, there's something really important that you need to know. That this is a map. And just like a map, it gives you an opportunity to see yourself objectively and know where you are. And the reason why you wanna know where you are is so that you can either go where you wanna go or avoid going where you don't wanna go. So this is an objective map that gives you a subjective experience of where you are at particular times so that you can avoid falling into your vice. And to make this work, you gotta study yourself, bro. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you some homework that you can use to start getting results right away, today. So make sure you stick around to the end. So the four phases of the cycle of vice include inflation, deflation, compulsion, and revulsion. You know when you're in inflation because you start thinking to yourself that I'm doing great. It's been a week, it's been a month, it's been six months, it's been a year, and I haven't slipped and fallen in a very long time. I haven't had a sip of a drink, I haven't had a smoke of a smoke, I haven't picked up that website, and strokey stroked. So you start thinking, I'm free. I've overcome this, I've triumphed, I've won over the battle in my soul. You start thinking, well if I can overcome this, then I can do anything. And as a result, the inflation begins. So I grew up in the 90s, and one of the things we used to say to a guy when he would think of himself more than he really is, is that, bro, you're tripping. Oh, you're gonna go talk to that girl who's a 10 and you're a two, you tripping. Oh, you're gonna be a professional basketball player, but you're five foot two, you're tripping. And so the whole idea about avoiding tripping is to avoid being inflated. The most dangerous place you could be is to be free because then you lose humility. And as a result, you start tripping and then the deflation begins. Deflation is when your bubble is popped. Maybe your girlfriend left you, maybe your boss fired you, maybe your dog got run over by a car, or maybe you just wanna celebrate. Maybe it's just the holidays. Maybe it's an opportunity for you to let loose because man, I've been free for so long. I've done well for so many months. I get to celebrate. Or in many cases, you realize you're just bored. Life is not throwing you a bunch of exciting things to do. Not every moment is an ecstatic adventure. There's not a lot of fun. There's not a lot of excitement. There's not a lot of stimulation in your life. You're not getting sensual gratification every day. So you decide, hey, I'm going to go get high. I know because that's the way I used to roll. So there becomes a preoccupation. 
You start thinking about how fun it would be or how good it would feel or how you could numb yourself with this substance. You start saying to yourself, it's really not that bad. I can just do it once and it's okay. I deserve this or I'm stressed out and it's just been a bad day. And this is where you may begin to start stumbling. Now there's a crazy thing about stumbling. When you stumble, there's two things that can happen. You can stumble and catch yourself or you can stumble and fall. You ever see someone trip on a sidewalk curb and by the grace of God or the grace of their athleticism or because there was somebody there to catch them, they don't actually fall? And then of course there's a time when somebody trips and face plant into the concrete. Man, that sucks. It's gonna be one or the other. So it's a very tenuous place to be. Now everybody stumbles from time to time, especially if you allow yourself to trip. But the best thing you can have by your side when you find yourself beginning to slide is an accountability coach or a band of brothers who've got your back. Now if you could relate and you think it would be great to have an accountability coach by your side, visit waronvice.com and maybe you could hire me to be your coach. We also got a band of brothers who've got your back. And there's a reason why they say iron sharpens iron. Waronvice.com. So you either stumble and stand or stumble and fall. But before the fall, there's a phase and it's called compulsion. And when you're in the compulsive phase, there's no stopping you. You're going to do what you're going to do regardless of what anybody tells you. It's almost like a demon takes over you or a different version of you steps in and you can't think with your brain anymore. You're going to do the thing regardless. And so you start the ritualization process because you know I just can't stop. And what do the rituals look like? You know what store you're going to buy it from. You know what parking lot you're going to sit in. You know what website you're going to go to. You know what couch you're going to sit in. You know where you're going to buy that food. You know where you're going to sit and eat it. You know every specific aspect of doing that damn thing because you've done it a thousand times. And that's the power of ritual. And if you pay attention to when you fall, it's usually through a predictable ritual. And then my friends is the fall. And at this point, it's already done. There's no looking back. Now, you might enjoy yourself for a little while. You might say, hey, that wasn't so bad. But then the guilt starts to creep in. The sense of disgust starts to creep in. And then you start to have revulsion. You start saying things like, man, I suck. Why can't I make a promise and keep it? Why can't I maintain my commitments? Why do I keep crossing my own boundaries? And if you're like a lot of guys, you begin to resign. At a certain point, you might say, what's the use anyway? Why don't I just give in and say that I am a drunk? I am a pothead. I am a frequent fapper and I can't help myself. It's just going to be the way I am. Or you start justifying yourself. Well, smoking weed is natural. It's not bad as drinking. Oh, I got to blow my load because it's only natural. Or my dad's a drunk, my granddad's a drunk, and so I'm going to be a drunk too. And so why even bother? At some point, you got to believe that you can rise. So then you rise again. You're going to do it again. You're going to try it again. And maybe it's a week, maybe it's a month, maybe it's a year. But if you let yourself get inflated, you're going to trip again. So the key to the cycle of vice is twofold. To recognize subjectively where you are, not so that you can avoid moving through the cycle of vice, but so that you can step outside of the cycle of vice. Because none of these phases are good for you. So here's your homework. Pull out a notebook, a pad and a pen, and start to think about the last time you tripped, stumbled, fell, and then rose again. Write out each one of these phases, one, two, three, and four, and then begin to think about exactly what you were doing, thinking, feeling, and experiencing during each one of those phases. And once you got that all on paper, read it and observe it. Why? So that you can step outside and you can be objective about yourself. And you can start to see where you start to go when you get inflated and when you're about to blow. And you start to recognize patterns. For example, if you find yourself in inflation, you can stop it before you trip. One of the things I said before is guys start planning. Do you start planning your future like you're going to be free forever and you start believing that you don't need any help? Well, now you have an objective benchmark to observe in yourself so that you don't trip again. So that's your homework. You got to do this. If you're going to break the cycle of vice, you got to see yourself as you really are. And in the next video, we're going to talk about supernatural virtue and why willpower isn't enough to destroy filthy vices for life. Like, subscribe, and comment.
I'll see you next time. Done.